Francesco Forgioni was born in 1887. By the time he was five years old, he had told his parents that he intended to dedicate his life entirely to God. By the age of seven or eight, the man who would eventually become St. Pio of Pietrocina told his parents that he actually had conversations with the Blessed Mother and Jesus. He was actually seeing them. You know, most of us have conversations about, like, the Blessed Virgin, or maybe we talk about Jesus and stuff, and I don't think anyone here actually sees him. Maybe you do, maybe you have in the past, but normally we talk often about people that aren't necessarily there, or maybe people we can't see. Well, just in family conversation, growing up in a Catholic family, uh, little Francesco sort of took that as normal conversation, and he assumed that everyone in his family could see the Blessed Mother and Jesus just as he did. And so when he was seven or eight, his parents finally asked him, Francesco, do you actually see them? He said, yes. Doesn't everybody? And the answer, of course, was, well, no. St. Uh, Padre Pio is an important figure to help remind us, again, of spiritual realities. He was made very aware of them. In fact, many of his gifts surrounded spiritual awareness that often uh, we're not aware of, obviously, or we often have out of our minds because it's out of our sight. One of the special gifts that Padre Pio had was his ability to read souls. So he would hear confessions up to uh, 13 hours a day. And he would sit his confessional and he would simply wait for people to come. And one of the important gifts that he had was the ability to be able to read souls. And when people would come to confession, they would confess certain things and they decide they would leave some things out that they didn't want to confess. At the end of the confession, they would say, well, Father, I'm done. And he'd say, don't you want to confess that other thing? Uh, yes, yes, Father, I, I want to do that too. I remember a professor in school once telling us, you know, you get to confession to us priests and, you know, we have some gifts, I suppose, but imagine going to confession to Padre Pio. He could have told you all of your sins and say, well, don't you want that? Don't you want to live a life perfectly before God? Don't you fear, I suppose, I certainly do, that there's some things that God is looking at that you've maybe forgotten or numbed your conscience to? I'd like to know those things because I don't want them brought up in the end. Today, friends, in our gospel, there's some important dynamics that we need to be aware of. First of all, Jesus is going through some different towns. One of them is Tyre, one of them is Sidon. He's on his way by way of Sea of Galilee to the Decapolis. Now, if you pay attention to geography in the Holy Land, Tyre is right on the Mediterranean coast. Sidon is about 10 miles north. The Decapolis is about 20 miles southeast of both of those. So right away at the beginning, it says, Jesus left the district of Tyre. He went north. And then by the way of Sea of Galilee, which lies between Sidon and the Decapolis, he went to the Decapolis. That is not the most direct route. In fact, Sidon is completely out of his way. The other thing important to remember about these three towns or these three places is that they were Gentile people. In those days, you had two types of people. There were Jews who would follow the Old Testament and the covenant of God, the people that God made a covenant with, and there were everyone else in the world who were considered Gentiles. It was unheard of for Jews to be mixed with Gentiles. And so the very fact that Jesus is going to Tyre, Sidon, and to Decapolis tells us something about his willingness to go out of his way to reach people. He goes out of his way to reach people. In chapters 5 through 8 of Mark, in particular, he's doing this Gentile mission circuit. He first hears a young child of a demon whose mother says, please intercede on behalf of my child. 
He cures another man of his blindness. And today we hear of him curing a man who's not able to hear and who has a speech impediment. I don't know what the man's name, I wasn't gonna say this because I don't wanna, it's Sunday morning so maybe we could be a little lighter. I think his name was probably William. Jesus spits on the ground, right, and he puts his fingers in his ear. You ever hear of a wet willy? <laughs> I don't know if his name was William or not. I don't mean to be a light of Jesus. Those fingers represent, friends, in Old Testament history, the fingers of God. The fingers of God were the things that came into the world in order to bring order from chaos. Right? You see now Jesus as God is now restoring order to this man who was born deaf and unable to speak well to bring a new life to him, to change his life. And notice that he didn't come, it doesn't say he came willingly. It said the crowds dragged him. Why? Well, it's the same reason why Jesus said at the end of this healing, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. Why would Jesus tell somebody after miraculous healing not to tell anyone? Maybe because the people were looking for entertainment. Maybe because they were looking only for physical healings, looking for dramatic things. Why did Jesus come in the first place? To heal bodies? Not primarily. He came to heal souls. He came to heal souls that were longing for something more than this life. It didn't matter whether you were a Jew or a pagan in those days. Every culture since the beginning of the history of the world has desired and known that there is something greater in their hearts that this world cannot give them. The Gentiles were looking for it. And while Jesus was popular because he was restoring people's sight, he was casting out demons and doing all these wonderful things, people were following him in droves. Except that's not ultimately where the Lord wanted to meet them. Physical healings are temporary. Spiritual healings remain. When you come to Mass, what are you looking for? Are you looking for real change? Are you looking to make a serious conversion in your life because the reality is, is that Jesus doesn't want you to just be physically healed. He wants you to be spiritually healed. Completely. You can have a physical healing, but the reality is you're still going to die. The life that Jesus came to bring is not life as we understand it, as we often conceive of it. The life that Jesus came to bring us is the life that shines and gives hope for all eternity. And there's never been a time, I don't think, in the world, especially in our culture, where that reality isn't just flatly cut off. The denial of those spiritual realities. That itch that comes that God gives us in the human heart that just cannot be satisfied with no matter how much stuff you have. No matter how many pleasures you surround yourself with. You can never get at it unless you follow the path of this death, deaf man. And it was threefold. First of all, he made himself available. The Father, he didn't want to be there. It doesn't matter whether you want to be here or not. He was reluctant to go, obviously, because they had to drag him there. But he was opened, and that's the second part. He was open to what God wanted to do in his life, right? There's God's will and there's our will. If all we're concerned about is doing our will, we cannot do God's will. And in that case, we should never say the Our Father because that is a dangerous prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We don't want to lie about that. 
We have to be open to doing his will and not our own. And to be honest, friends, I've, in my life, have done both of these things. And I can tell you right now that it is much easier doing God's will than your own. Even if it seems for a time things are going okay, eventually it will crumble. And then this idea not to tell anyone. Jesus heals us oftentimes in the silence of our hearts. When's the last time you had a good amount of silence? The openness to the Lord in this gospel is conditioned by the fact that Jesus takes the man off alone, away from the crowds. The world has a way of sucking us in, drawing us into things that ultimately don't really matter. The great wisdom that the gospel gives us is the reality that St. Augustine pointed out so many years ago, and we can never grow tired of quoting, Lord, our hearts are restless until they rest in you. And we need that time to come away with the Lord and allow him to touch our ears so we can hear his word, as we say in baptism, and our mouth to proclaim his praise. Otherwise, what's the purpose of this life? Why are we here? Why do we exist? Why did God create us? What is his plan for us? But are we open to that plan? Today, friends, there's going to be after Mass a speaker coming up, and he's going to introduce to us again the program that we've been doing for the last three years in the parish uh, called That Man Is You. There's a new program that's come out. Um, It's based somewhat on some of the old stuff, But we have had a group of 20 to 25 men in the parish for the last three years faithfully attend this program every Friday morning, like 6 o'clock, 5.30 in the morning. They probably have to get up, be here by 6. Maybe some of them come reluctantly. (laughs) Maybe some of them really want to be there. At 6 o'clock, it's probably pretty reluctant, but they're there, and they're open. And he's going to introduce that program again in something I'm encouraging for all men to engage in, this great spiritual battle that's going on. That there's things that we need interiorly that the secular world just can't satisfy. And we should be curious enough to find out what those things are. So friends, today let's ask the Lord for those places of healing we need in our life. Ask the Lord for an opening up of that conscience. It was a surprise to me to find out at some point as I was moving along through seminary that some people really believe that they can hide things from God. They really believe they can hide things from God. He's God. He's God. He knows everything. I wish I could read souls in the confessional sometime. But it's part of God's interior working in his grace to know that those areas that you may be most ashamed of, especially probably as the man was because of his blindness or because of his inability to hear or to speak well, it's precisely that those places that God goes out of his way to find in order that they can be healed. So friends, today, let's remember the gospel today and the importance of being open before the Lord who knows us better than we know ourselves. If you haven't been to confession in a long time, go. If you don't know what you have to confess, ask your spouse. (laughs) They'll tell you. So friends, today we continue to ask the Lord to to continue to heal our hearts And we pray for the grace uh, to be open to the healing that he wants to give each and every one of us.